Recently, I've had a lot of people asking how I build and requesting a video on the topic. My name is Oskip, and today I'm going to share with you some of my building tips and tricks to help take your creations to the next level. In front of me, I've laid out a selection of different blocks I incorporated into these building tricks. I've gotten most of these blocks from 1.14, such as the lantern, the campfire, and the lectern, that I've decided to use in some building ideas, as well as some of the more OG blocks that you maybe didn't think of using before. Anyway, let's get into things, shall we? So I've got them all laid out like this nicely for you all. These blocks I'm going to work on incorporating into builds. These dead coral blocks that I have at the back here i'm planning on using and mixing into stone and cobblestone to add some more variety uh these are the og blocks that i was talking about basically just making use of banners anvils iron fences signs and then obviously using some gates and trap doors and buttons and whatnot so first things first is this gate design i've had a lot of people asking me how i made these gates i've i've used them in all of my transformation builds where i've done this kind of arching effect and i've done it here as well as you can see it's pretty easy honestly it's just the way that gates react when you place them next to walls so when i place down a wall and then place a gate next to it it will actually lower itself down because normally you can see it's quite just that little bit higher so if you place one next to a wall it will lower it down a little bit you put one in between put one on the other side and then put a fence on the other side and that's about it to be honest you can work this into different designs and whatnot i mean here you can see i've got it going around a corner so I've got a wall, two gates, a fence, two gates, and then another wall. So it kind of makes this waving effect. It reaches up in the corner. But yeah, it's just a way to make your fence gates a little bit more interesting rather than just having it a straight fence. Anyway, that's that. Let's move on to the next thing. So we're going to start out with some simpler things. There will be some things in this that I'm sure that a lot of you will know, but I'm trying to cover all bases from beginner to difficult. So this is pretty simple. Basically just using trap doors as like shelves or makeshift shelves. You just stick them underneath the the um, chests and then you can also do the same thing by sticking chests and walls and you can do stairs on top and you can still open them as well which is pretty neat well, I actually got this design from Felix in the Japanese house that he made because he did it originally and then I used it on my transformation version of him it's actually really useful these trap doors work really well with that Japanese style of building I think or Asian style of building anyway I just thought it was really useful and it's a way that you can use these trap doors to decorate your house now get onto something that's a little bit more interesting so there might be a lot going on here but the main stuff that I wanted to focus on is is kind of just like basically mixing in everything the stone buttons I've got at the top and the bottom here because it kind of looks like rivets going through the log which is uh, pretty nice I've added some stone walls to the bottom here some fence in between a nice gate at the top to arch over another thing you can do with gates I'll show you this later on but gates if you open them up like this they actually make for really useful support beams so if I quickly show you that you can kind of see it's like a support beam and then it kind of goes inwards it's just a different design again you can change it over like that it's using these blocks in the way that you didn't think they were meant to be useful anyway apart from that let's move on to the next thing so I'm sure that you saw these in the distance from the previous shot but I've got a bunch of lamp post designs here for you to check out so the first one is this one we've got stone at the bottom a wall a few fences a cobblestone wall at the top and then you can use some trap doors and then it's making use of this grindstone, which is actually really useful. I, I really like the, the way that this works with it. It's kind of like, because you can put these on any direction, basically, and make the supports actually connect to that block. So it's, it's really useful, especially for creating something like this. It's kind of as if it's hanging down, which is really nice. Next design is kind of similar. The, these are all going to be the same or similar similar thing but they're just different ways that you can go about it. Stone at the bottom, wall, fence, and then we've got a hopper on top of that. It just makes, it's a good transition. It fits perfectly on top of a fence and then you can make it go to a full block at the very top. I've added some signs around the back and then some trap doors on top and then a lantern on top of that as well. This is a different design, just a few fences, cobblestone wall, trap door, and you've got an iron fence up top holding that so it makes it look like it's hanging down longer, which is nice. Now this is my favorite design out of all of the lamp posts that I've got here. So it's actually the same thing going on here. I've got a wall, fence, wall. I've got the stone cutter there. I've surrounded it with some signs on either side and trapdoor on the back on top and then I've got a grindstone hanging down with a lantern underneath it. I just really like how this one looks. It's, I mean, it's got the animation of the stone cutter at the top there. I don't think lampposts actually have that in real life, but <laughs> I thought it looked pretty neat. So it's a cool way of integrating. In it's a cool way of using both of those different blocks, I think. So moving on, we've got a few more simple designs of ways to light up your area. So we've just got a wall, a grindstone on top, again, because of these little supports on either side is really useful. And then a lantern sitting on top. Now, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. So at the very bottom, I don't know if you can see, but I've got I've got a lectern at the very bottom. I've got a grindstone sitting on top and then a lantern. And then I've just surrounded it with some trap doors all the way around and then a sign at the front to cover up the the mess of 
of books and stuff that's on the actual lectern design. A similar design, just mixing it around a bit, basically putting the signs on either side and then trapdoors in the back and the front. Now we're done with the lanterns, it's time to move on to the campfires. So I've got the same design that we've got here. We've got a lectern underneath, trapdoors on either side, a sign on either side, and the campfire on top. It just makes for a cool looking torch, honestly. And we've got a few more of those designs coming up here as well. So incorporating the lectern again, I've got the campfire sitting on top, some signs and trap doors on either side. It just looks really unique, I think. And obviously this is the original without anything on it. It's just the lectern and then the campfire on top. But even that looks fine. If that was up against the wall, that looks like a torch. So that looks decent. Not sure if many people know this. I'm sure they do. But obviously with the campfires, you've got the smoke animation going up to make like a makeshift chimney or whatever. But you can also put a trap door here, come around to the side, place a trap door down, delete that block. It will stop the smoke when it's over top of it like this, but by doing so, you can make it flush with these other blocks and still have enough space for the smoke to come up. So I just thought that was a really cool little feature, which I wasn't aware of before. So you can really make a compact campfire design this way and have the smoke actually come out the chimney like in this one. So here I've just made a quick little makeshift house of what it, what it could be or what it would be. Nothing too crazy going on here. I've got the campfire down there, just some cobblestone surrounding it. Um, an iron fence is like the grate at the front and we've got trap doors here some signs at the top just to decorate it a little bit more just to make it a little bit more unique uh, I've done the same thing here so if you can see it actually does travel all the way up inside I've just got this trap door here doing the same thing that I have here basically placing it so it's flush with these two other blocks but it's still leaving a gap in the middle so that the smoke can travel up and so coming up to the top here we've still got that one gap spot where the smoke is coming up from so it's just a fireplace design basically that acts naturally with the smoke coming up and out of the top but there are other ways you can get around it as well you don't have to have a gap you can also do this design so we've got the same thing going on here we've got the fireplace the smoke's traveling up but it does stop with this block of cobblestone here, so the smoke doesn't travel up any higher. But to make a really compact design, we can have it so that the cobblestone goes all the way to the top, and then we can just place another campfire at the top to make it seem like the smoke is traveling all the way up. And yeah, it makes a really compact design, so you have two different campfires, one at the bottom, so the animation stops, and then just continue at the very top. Coming into here, I've made this quick little kitchen design. I just wanted to show off different ways that you can use these blocks because I thought it was really interesting. Uh, we've got this little trap door at the front here, makes it look like a dishwasher almost. We've got a trip wire as a sink, that's quite a classic technique. We've got a banner on the wall that makes a good like makeshift hand towel or something. And then same goes for here, we've got one of the banner patterns on the wall in an item frame. Up here along the tops, we've got barrels placed as cabinets almost. They just make really cool cabinets and they're actually functional as well, which is useful. So here we've got two smokers and you have the smoke animation coming up through it. So what we've done here is actually place two campfires beneath it and the smoke can travel past the smoker block and then up through to the ventilation system up there. Also what I've done here, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been playing with the floor design as well. So these aren't natural blocks. This is a blast furnace and this is polished andesite. It just mixes in to make a really unique, different looking checkered floor pattern. It's really useful for kitchens and stuff, I think. So at the top here, we've got the ventilation system where the smoke gets chucked up into. Uh, we've got some stone and some stone slabs on either side using the new stone slabs, which is useful. We've got some hoppers at the front here that are connected. They're like pipes, which is just, I like how that looks. Bit more of an industrial feel to it. And then we've got stone cutters on top of these iron trap doors here, just because I like the pattern that it has here. It looks like little wooden support beams, which is really useful. And lastly, but not least, we've got the ceiling design. I've added sea lanterns in as the light source and then I've surrounded it with trap doors and just use that as the main ceiling material. It's really useful just because it's not a full block so you can get away with little edge features around the actual lighting and it just means it doesn't take up an entire block space which is really useful. Moving on I'm sure that a lot of you have seen this but I just thought I'd cover it anyway so we've got this lava pit here and obviously the smoke animation that's not natural. I'm sure that you already know how this works but I'll show you it anyway so all you need to do is you need to dig down a few blocks you place in the campfire at the bottom so you get the smoke animation and then you can place the lava on top so it'll keep the smoke animation going but the lava will be visible so that's all i've done here i basically just scattered around a bunch of campfires underneath to make the trails longer like these ones here i've added a hay bale underneath it so if you add a if you have a regular campfire here it will just chuck smoke up to a certain limit and cap it off but if you put a hay bale underneath it put a campfire on top it will actually carry the smoke much further as you can see here
In a lot of my transformation builds, I've been using these portal designs where I make a circular portal, surround it in some stone or embed it into a cliff face or something like that. And I thought I wanted to show you a quick way that you could kind of get around it. So obviously, if you have welded it and creative, you can make a circular nether portal that's just normal. But in regular survival or normal Minecraft, you can't actually do that. So ways you can get around it is just by making a square nether portal. So all I've got here is an 11 by 11 portal by hiding it with some stone and uh, using stairs and stuff like that to make this circular design, it looks like a circular portal, so you can get away with it. That's what I've done here. So if you look around the corners, you can see it's actually a square portal and it goes down to there. Anyway, it's just a really useful way of making a circular nether portal in survival. You can just hide it with the surrounding, or it doesn't have to be in a cliff face. You can, you can hide it with whatever you want, but it's just a, a nifty little way that you can get around it. You just hide the actual frame inside the the rock formation or whatever it is you're doing another thing i wanted to mention about this little build that i've got here so i've added a lot of variation into it i'm sure you can tell i've actually got some what would usually be stone and cobblestone you've got that here i've mixed in some mossy stone as well but i'm using the dead coral blocks just to add some variation to the gray because if you use a lot of stone and cobblestone it does get very repetitive and boring a lot of the time so mixing these into the equation really adds for a lot more texture because look over here if you just see it like this this is the regular stone it's just very bland but mixing these in it looks a lot better i've done the same thing with the leaves here as well so i'm using spruce and birch leaves to mix in just to make it look a little bit nicer so coming down here we've got some more simple ideas but they might be useful in your survival world i thought so using banners again you can make these kind of curtains which is really nice and i also use these signs above the window to act as like a curtain rail just because i thought it was a little bit more unique than just adding curtains on either side again i've got another design here so same thing just a few banners placed down and it makes a nice little curtain so i thought that was a nice feature to add into there so you're probably looking at this and freaking out because there's a lot of design going on in it really it's uh, a lot to look at the main thing that i did all of this for was to show you how adding depth to a build can help like tremendous amounts usually if you were to make a house i've seen a lot of people that would just grab some logs some wood and that's their wall design so you can do that obviously there's nothing wrong with that but if you wanted to add a little bit more depth into it you can go around doing this so i've got these pillars on either side and I'll show you the, the design for them in a minute, but I've got these pillars on either side and then it goes in a layer. We've got this like almost wall feature going on down here. It then goes in another layer with some cobblestone and another like section as like base support for the building. It then goes in another layer and you've got the actual wall behind that. And then obviously on top of that, I've just added a bunch of trap doors. These gates, as you can see, I'm using these gates as wooden, like little miniature wooden supports for the holding up the log. A really unique design as well. And so then I've got the log support going across there. I've got some stone coming across here to hold the next section. It's just full of, there's a lot of depth going on in it because it's constantly going in and constantly going out. And it's just a really good way of taking your pre-existing house and just taking it to the next level honestly adding depth to any build will help a miles amount you don't need this much detail but just adding depth to a build will help a lot trust me so a few other features i'll quickly show up before moving on but we've got these arched fence gates up here again so you can use them in not just for a fence but you can use them in designing like creating some cool support beams like i've done here remember it only works with stone walls or well not any just any walls it has to be walls on either side that will make that arching effect i've got these grindstones here just because i wanted to incorporate them into the build and i thought they make interesting looking supports as well so we've got them connected to the top we've got the little wooden support beam bits coming down there and then the actual stone well not the stone cutter sorry the grindstone with some fences beneath and then a stone wall at the bottom yeah there's a lot going on but i thought it was just really a really fun way to try to see how much stuff i could fit into one build <laughs> into one wall anyway moving on so a few little ways we can use barrels here into log design, which I thought was pretty unique. So underneath this rail, you can see we've got barrels going along here. They're just regular barrels, but if you place them this way, they've got these nice like metal rivets going along it, which is really useful. So you can either do it without the rail and make this kind of uh, tied down log beams, or you can add the rail on top as well. A lot of people usually do this anyway. Before we had barrels, they would just place rail on top, but I really like incorporating both of the designs, adding the barrels beneath as well, just because it's that extra little bit that you're adding into it basically so this is the pillar design that i showed you on that house but i'm going to go over it a little bit more in detail now so you can understand what it is we basically just got a stone block surrounded by stone walls here you've got a regular log block a barrel and then two regular log blocks but on these ones i'm adding and surrounding it with trapdoors. i had a barrel in between trapdoor surrounding that one again 
a log on top, and then we've got an anvil in between, and then it's the same thing above, I've just mirrored it on top. And it just makes for a really compact but really detailed looking pillar, I thought. So usually you can make these massive pillars that you can add into your build, but if you really don't have a lot of space to work with, you can really do anything. You can even make it thinner than this. I just thought it was a really detailed and fun way of making a pillar. So moving on from that, I used this design in the Jack Transformation build. Basically in his uh, cellar below, I added a bunch of barrels and then I added them in this like formation here because that's where he stores his, his Guinness or whiskey or whatever it is. I just thought it was a really cool way of making use of these barrels so obviously you can make this into like a almost like a wine cellar or anything you want really but again i really like using these trap doors as the floor just because they're so thin so you can get away with using them like for anything honestly if you really weren't working with a lot of space in your house putting these trap doors down or using them as a floor or shelving or as a roof it really honestly helps conserve a lot of space right moving on so here we've got the anvils lined up in a row it just makes for a clean looking banister honestly you could put this inside of a mansion and it would look neat it would look nice you can put this on top of a roof it would look nice i think so these are different ways that you can actually use the design i've done the same thing just added a bunch of anvils in this direction and then the ones on the ends i've added them in the opposite direction so i've turned them sideways and then i've just added some trap doors on top and it makes a nice little banister as well i've got two more designs for you here as well gradually upgrading as we go so for this design i've decided to alternate it with cauldrons just because it's something a little bit more unique and so at the back here I've got this wall design which I thought was really unique as well so I've basically I've got the cauldron stacked on the side here with anvils on top to make like the corner points and then this is the actual wall here I'm just using anvils cauldron stacked on top and then alternating with iron fences and it really makes for like a unique looking fancy wall that you can put around your build so same thing with the anvils we've got the lecterns here if you put them just lined up facing away because on this side they've got the books which doesn't look so good but if you put them facing away it just makes for another nice like clean banister and then the same thing goes for here all i've done is turn these ones on their side to make the corner pieces and then put the trap doors on top and it makes another nice little banister so trying out different things and getting a little bit more creative with it you can alternate some gates in between to make another style of banister and i've put some logs on the end to make the corner pieces and then at the back here we've got this <laughs> very interesting looking wooden wall i've used these grindstones or stone cutter sorry at the very top kind of looks like barbed wire i thought so it just it was just an interesting way of using them. I, I thought of incorporating them into the build. There's a few different things going on here. So we've got the lecterns below. We've got three of them there. We've got signs at the front. I've added some open gates as well as just little extra support bits. We've got some trap doors on top of already existing log. We've got barrels at the very bottom to add that little metal strip going through them because I think that looks really nice. And then lastly, we've got lecterns at the very top. I don't know if anyone ever used this design, but I thought it was pretty cool. So a fun little way that you can use some of these new blocks in 1.14, I've made this little jukebox system here. I've got a loom beneath, I've got the stone cutter on top and I've got barrels on either side. And then all I've done is add item frames with black music discs on top. And it looks like some sort of jukebox or stereo system. I used this in Felix's house in the transformation build that I did for him and I thought it was just a really cool little way of making a fun little speaker system. You can obviously change this for a note block down below so you can actually play music on it but for the aesthetic wise I just wanted to show this off here like this. So moving on from the regular building kind of stuff I don't usually do this kind of stuff very often but I really want to try it out and show it off so I've decided to make some vehicles using these grindstones because obviously these grindstones look like wheels don't they with the supports going up and attaching to the block. They look so unique, I had to try and make something with them. So I made this bike here. It doesn't really look like a bike, but it was the best that I could do. <laughs> yeah, it's just fun little ways that you can try to use these blocks differently from what you wouldn't usually use them as. So we've got these as the wheels here. We've got some iron trap doors on top. We've got an open gate here. And then, oh, didn't want to do that. Item frames on the bottom and on the back side to act as like a chair almost. And then we've got signs on either side as well. I just thought it was a fun little design. Coming over here, I wanted to incorporate the same thing so i've got the grindstones as wheels but this time i've added the item frames on top to make it look a little bit more like wheels because without them it looks a little bit weird and you can get away with it without it honestly but it does look a little bit better if you keep the item frames on top i think so anyway looking at this design i've added a loom underneath to kind of act as the front grill which is really cool added some stairs around basically to make the bumper and the side bumpers and whatnot i'm using carpets a lot and i've obviously got some glass here as well some glass panes 
I've got a trap door on the inside, but it's placed on the inside like that. So it kind of keeps this stripy pattern going throughout the entire thing, which is, I thought was really cool. And then lastly, we've got this spoiler at the back here, which is pretty sick if I do say so myself. So you've got a stair going up, you've got a trap door attached to the back of that. And then underneath we put some string and then the carpet is sitting on the string. So from a distance, you don't actually see the string, which is really nice. And it makes for a nice little spoiler. Right, and lastly, I had to try and use these grindstones as a tank. <laughs> I've never made a tank before in my life, but I thought it'd be fun to try it out and make use of them. And well, I, I'm actually quite happy with how it turned out, honestly. So I've added in these grass paths and podzol behind to act as tracks, which was I thought was a fun little way to add some, some tank tracks behind it. For the actual design, all I've done is use trapdoors, again, iron trapdoors underneath, so on the inside of the block like that. Trapdoors on the end, and to activate them, I've just got some levers on either side, same at the front as well. And then I've got some polished andesite blocks on top, got the little hole in, in the here for the guy to sit and actually fire the cannon, which I thought was pretty cool. Got the actual cannon itself, which is just made out of cobblestone walls. Yeah, I don't know, I thought it was a fun little way. I've never really made these kind of vehicles before and I thought I'd, I'd try something different and I was happy with what I came out with honestly really like the car and the tank was a fun little surprise as well so moving on here we've got this wooden bridge I'm using the campfires as the actual walkway for the bridge I'm sure that you've seen there's other people that have done this I'm pretty sure Grian's done this as well but I wanted to just try it for myself make a little bit more of a different design I use these gates as the supports that you can use to hold on when walking across the bridge which I thought was kind of nice but yeah if you basically place down a campfire and extinguish it with some water on top you can get these wooden slats and it looks really good for a multiple purpose things it doesn't just have to be a campfire you can make a wooden walkway out of it a wooden bridge <laughs> yeah it's just different and unique ways you can get around using these new blocks so I've made that cool little walkway and then using the campfires as well I've also done this so here using the campfires again I've got them placed underneath the ground as you can see there uh, making the smoke animation We've got trap doors as the ceiling, doing that whole light thing again. So it's just a nice high rise ceiling. And then we've got extinguished campfires here and underneath we've got actual lit campfires, making little bits of smoke come through. Basically it looks like a sauna and it was just a really cute and cozy little idea and it turned out really well honestly so with that done i've got the last little creation here over on the side so i know a lot of people have already done this uh Jericraft has done it green has done it loads of people have done it but i wanted to include it just because i wanted to make this like a big compilation video of all different tips and tricks that you can use so what we've got here is by incorporating stained glass i've basically placed some lava placed the stained glass on top and it makes it quite foggy if i change the time of day to night here you can even see it even more honestly on the left we've got different stained glass we've got white lime green and regular green stain, stained glass stacked up on top of each other and that's what we've got down here so i've got regular green lime green and then white stained glass at the very bottom we've got lava stack all these things on top of each other like so and it makes for like a really murky greeny fog we've got the same thing going on here we've got white stained glass we've got magenta stained glass and then purple stained glass and by stacking them all like that it makes this like purple eerie kind of fog which is really cool with really kind of mystical and magical you can use in some wizardy builds and then lastly we've just got some regular old fog here i've got some white stained glass some light gray and some regular gray stained glass as well all on top of lava it just makes for a subtle mist which i think is pretty cool you can obviously alternate these in different ways you can put the white on top you can put the colored ones beneath and it works the same way this is just how i went about doing it obviously it looks really good with this green one here i think and the purple one is pretty decent White one's all right, it looks better in the daytime. But either way, I thought there were some cool, nifty little ways you can get around to creating some colorful fog. So I just decided to jump back into my Patreon transformation build just because I want to show off a few things that you can make your world look a little bit better with. So what I've got here is we've obviously got these custom trees. Custom trees help tremendously when making or pushing your build to the next level. If you don't know what to actually add to the actual building, if you add a custom tree next to it, it makes the world of difference. So obviously just chuck around some logs you can incorporate some fence and some slabs and some gates into it as well I've got some gates uh, scattered around 
No, I don't. <laughs> anyway, you can use some gates, you can use some slabs, anything, basically any type of wood, mix it into it. It adds a lot of variation and they, they look like branches, which also helps. And then if we come around to the other side of this custom tree, I've got a few little plant designs that you can incorporate as well. So I've got this tiny little tree here. Basically, I've just stacked on two fence posts and then some leaves on top. Just if you didn't want to make a full block tree, you can also get around doing this, which is a cool little way you can do it. And then down here, we've also got this tiny little plant pot, which I thought was really, really cool. You've got a dead bush, a plant pot, and then you've got a leaf block on top. You can't actually place it there, so you have to do the whole thing where you build up and then put it down next to it. But it makes for a really cool potted plant that you can use on interior builds, which I thought was a fun little feature. So another little feature that is actually in this building next to the tree is this bell tower. This is making use of the bell block that was added in the new update, and it's just a fun little way of using it realistically as an actual bell tower. Obviously, it's a tiny bell <laughs> when you compare it to the size of the bell tower, but it's Minecraft. You gotta use what you gotta. You gotta do what you gotta do. So all I've done here is I've just made inside the actual roof. I've just put some iron fences coming down, and then I've put a full block there because you can't actually connect these on the inside, which is kind of annoying. So you can't put them underneath it, but you have to put a full block like so, and then you can hang it like that. Either way, I thought it was just a fun little way to make an actual bell tower. Right, and lastly, coming down to this bridge that I made for him. So we've got these fences here doing the arch fence thing again, which I really like. The thing that I wanted to show off was using these trap doors again. So we've made these kind of arching supports on the bridge just by using trap doors. Obviously, you can only place them on the top and on the bottom of blocks like so. But in doing so, you can make for some really cool thin archway supports, which I, I just really liked using. And then obviously, I've placed some lanterns on the bottom of them as well. They're just fun little ways that you can use trap doors. Anyway, that'll do for today's video. I hope some of these building techniques were useful to you. And if so, then make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll get that little ding next time I upload. If you fancy sharing your own building tips or discovering new ones through the community, then you can come join my Discord. If you want to support me or download any of my builds, then you can do so over on my Patreon. I'll leave a link to both of those down in the description. But aside from that, I hope that you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time.